Well, today on Broadsaw Ballistics, we're going to look at Seiko's fabulous new Quest model. This takes over from their Model 85 Carbon Wolf. This is the Model 90 Quest, and it uses this fantastic carbon fibre stock, which is their new uh, resin transfer moulding system, or the RTM. And it makes for a very lightweight and very, very portable stalking or, or hunting rifle, which is absolutely fantastic. You have a Cerakote finish, so it's almost indestructible and weatherproof out in the, the field. Cold Hammer Forge barrel, new model 90 action with cutaway receiver at the top so you can load from the um, magazine very, very easily. Adjustable length of pull and cheek piece, which is a fantastic feature on this. We'll show that in a bit more detail. And something I really, really like is their new five index trigger. Again, we'll show you in more detail. Overall, it's a fantastic new carbon fiber lightweight rifle from Seiko. And it's a rifle for all seasons and all quarry species. Right, let's go and look through the key features now on the, the new Seiko 90 Quest. And the most obvious really is around the action area here. And if you look closely, the whole of the action and the barrel have this fantastic black or matte uh, black, um, sniper black they call it, um, Cerakote finish. So it's incredibly tough. It's uh, waterproof, scratch resistant, rust resistant. And we've had this in Scotland, stalking stags and all over the place. And it just shirks off uh, any of the... Um, the bad weather and uh, abuse that you can actually use on a hunting rifle, uh, which is very nice. And beneath that is a stainless steel action and a stainless steel barrel. So, you know, extra, extra good for uh, longevity as well, which is fantastic. But if you look closely, on top here, um, on this either side of the action or the ejection port, this has been enlarged. So, when you actually want to actually eject around, it's very, very clear and ejects very, very easily. But also you can, if you want to, you can feed rounds in through the top and load the magazine in situ, which is very handy when you're out in the field. Say you're doing a, a, a road doe cull or a, um, a red hind cull, and you haven't got time to pop the mag out, you can literally feed in as you want. And I thought this is a nice little feature, it makes a lot of difference and it still keeps the integrity and strength of the, the 90 action there, which is very, very nice. And so you have the Picatinny uh, twin uh, scope mounting rails here as well, integral to the action, so you can mount the universal fitting Picatinny uh, uh, scope mounts. We have Burris signature rings here, which are very, very nice, and these are imported by GMK also. Uh, the actual bolt itself is typical Seiko. It's a six degree bolt lift, and if you look closely on the bolt there, it's the free lug arrangement here. Uh, which they have on the 85 and this gives a very very nice engagement in the abutments in the action and you also have Seiko's very very typical large extractor uh, which is very positive on all the reloads and the factory tested and a lot of other factories actually copy this now but one of the main features which is different and I hope you can see this is uh, on the uh, the bolt head here you have a twin plunger ejection system and this was taken from their TRG uh, sniper rifles and this gives very very positive ejection you'll see that on the test later on how positive that was. Uh, the bolt handle itself is slightly um, cooked back quite short but nice rounded and it's blued uh, finish on that which is very nice with a sort of semi teardrop finish. You also have a, a all steel bolt shroud, a cocking indicator and you can actually by pushing this, this little button in here now on the 90 series take the whole bolt apart. I won't because it, it is a little bit fiddly, but it does help if you want to strip the bolt. It's very, very nice. So bedding wise on the action, you'll see when we've taken it out of the stock here, you've actually got two stock, stock screws, uh, front and rear, and these secure up through uh, into the uh, base of the action. And the action differs slightly here because it's a carbon fiber stock here on the Quest and you have a separate large steel recoil lug, which actually fits very, very precisely into um, uh, an abutment or cut into the, um, or uh, mortise into the carbon fiber stock. And then it actually fits over where the front screw goes up into the action. When it's bolted together, it's incredibly um, stable. And I actually take it in and out. When I did this test, we, we take it out again and put it back in, in again for the photographs. And no zero or minimum half inch uh, difference or variation at 100 yards on the zero. So I think that's very impressive, showing how stable the actual bedding is uh, on the 
uh, the Quest platform here. The safety remains the same on the Seiko. It's a tried and tested system. I mean, why bother changing it? Once uh, cocked the rifle, it's side lever here, nice and quiet. Back is on, so you can't pull the trigger and it locks the bolt. But if you want to actually access uh, the cartridge in the chamber, you can push this secondary uh, lever in the front, push it down and it operates the bolt while still on safe. It's a nice little feature I and mean, it's there if you want to use it. If not, then you know, don't worry too much. Yeah, but nice. And there's also a cocking indicator here at the back of the bolt shell we mentioned earlier, which is actually a nice visual and tactile um, indication that the actual quest is, is cocked. One of the real features which I absolutely love, and I would love to retrofit it to my Seiko 20 if possible, is a new trigger mechanism. And this is um, all new for the 90 models. And it's a five index rotary system. So basically you have five preset settings for the trigger weight and it's acts and it's clicked you know one to five in very easy to access through the front of the trigger guard with your Seiko torque screw here, which is supplied with the rifle, and you literally just click one, two, three, four, five. And that's that is your setting, which is very, very, very nice and easy to easy to do. So on the, we'll show you the settings now. We're actually going to use the Lyman trigger gauge and show you the different settings on settings one, uh, three, and five. And they're very handy because the one uh, sitting on one is the lightest, obviously, and that can be used when you're sighting in a rifle uh, to get the best accuracy potential possibly. When you're out hunting, you can set it on three, it's, it's a little bit heavier, so if you, you know, your finger's a little bit cold or you, you, you're stumbling around, you don't want to actually accidentally let the trigger off. And on five, it's the heaviest. And that was, you know, cold weather or you're wearing gloves when your fingers are probably numb. So it's a really nice system, very, very easy to use and very simple. And you can actually change that in the field if you want to, and it's precise and it's re reproducible. Also, the trigger blade here uh, is also adjustable um, for length of pull, which is very, very nice. I mean, the stock is adjustable, we'll show you that later, but you can also adjust to fit your hand and your length of your trigger finger to absolutely get that correct if you want to. And that is basically on a, uh, a little Allen key here in the trigger blade, loosen that off and you can slide the trigger blade backwards and forwards, which is, which is very, very handy. Magazine, as on all Seikos, is uh, their, sort, their two point um, engagement system. It's stainless steel. So first of all, you, there's a lever at the front of the mag uh, in the um, action wheel, push that forward, but at the same time pushing on the front of the magazine and it just pops out like that. It's a nice little safety feature there. This is a five shot magazine in 308. Uh, it differs with different calibers, obviously. But what it does, is it saves you. If I put it back in, you can see, pop it there and then click. Now it's totally safe. Because if you try and pop it out by just using the release lever, it won't come out. This is a nice fe feature out in the field. So your magazine doesn't actually come out when you don't want it to. If you bang, bang it down on a bipod or on shooting sticks, which I did in uh, South Africa once when I was lined up on an Impala and that was very embarrassing on another rifle. <laughs> so this stops you having that embarrassment uh, situation with a professional hunter out in the field. And feeding is totally reliable. It's got a good length on the magazine uh, for overall length. So you can actually put your reload slightly longer to uh, match your um, your throat in your um, chamber as well on the rifle, which is you know, which is very very handy for us reloaders. Right, let's look at the barrel next. I mean, Seiko pride themselves on really good quality, and this is a match grade stainless steel barrel. And on the Quest model, it's 20 inches, which is very, very sensible. So it's about up to here. We've got a Stallon sound moderator on there because um, we always use sound moderators here in Britain for for deer stalking. So basically the overall length and weight of it is, is very, very good. I mean, the overall length actually of the rifle uh, is 39.75 uh, inches and it weighs three kilograms without the scope and the moderator. So it's a really handy rifle to have. Um, a lot of that weight is actually reduced as well by having the fluting here. And to some degree it does help with um, uh, uh, reducing heat as well, but it's more, it's visual and it's, it's weight reducing as well. On the end of the muzzle, uh, it's a, a uh, it's a match grade barrel and it's actually got a fantastic uh, muzzle crown to it as well. So exiting bullets really are precise and leave the barrel completely clean, which is best for best accuracy. And on this model, you have a, a 5.8 UNEF thread. Um, and we have a 308 caliber 
and it's a 1 in 11 uh, rifling twist, which is very nice. And again, as you said, Cerakote as well, which is a very practical finish. And, you know, most modern rifles should have this finish now. It's, you know, it's, it's, I know bluing looks nice, but Cerakote is, is the way to go in my um, view. And it's not only good on, looking good on the outside, inside the, um, the Cold Hammer Forge barrel is burnished. So basically it's already shot in. It's like having the old days when you used to have a new engine fitted to your car. You used to have to sort of run it in sort of every five, five, 500 miles and change your Here it's shoot to go and you'll see in the test we just took the rifle out of the box, shot it and it was spot on actually straight away. So nice little feature, plus it cleans very easily as well. We noticed um, during the test, we shot a lot of tests, ammunition, I did a lot of reloads as well off camera and when we were out hunting up in Scotland. And even with some of the high pressure loads and with the fast 110 grain uh, VMAXs, it, it coppered up, surely, sure, but it cleaned very, very quickly, which is just a nice nice feature to have on any hunting rifle, let's be honest with you. And then finally, which is the Piesta de Resistance and what the Quest is all about, and it follows on a little bit from the Seiko Peak we tested earlier, it's a carbon fibre stocked rifle. So what's that give you? That gives you lightweight, it gives you great manoeuvrability and incredible strength as well, as well as resisting or res resilient to any weather conditions, so it won't warp or, or change point of impact, which is very, very important. They use, um, which is what I like actually, Seiko now use it in-house and they actually make the stocks themselves. And they're very proud because they put a little sticker in the barrel channel when you take the um, barrel action out of stock, which is very nice. And it's actually produced um, by the uh, RTM method. Uh, that's a resin, resin transfer molding. And it's a 3D layering of carbon fiber over a mold. And it gives incredible strength and also the finish off as well is there's no checkering to this but because it's such an ergonomic stock you have you get good grip anyway but there's a slight extra a little feel to it, texture to it which gives that little bit of extra um, grip where, where needed and it's also uh, gives a nice slightly matte finish as well so in the field it doesn't reflect very well which i do like it's non-hollow so it doesn't resonate so if you're hitting out stalking and you hit your sticks or or jingle around your on your um binoculars there's no extraneous noise to give you away which is very very nice as well um, so looking at it you actually have on the quest here it's quite a, a slim forend it's slightly build here so it's a nice grip you have two sling swivel studs, studs here that's the only thing i did find when i was out stalking one of the bipods testing you can put on the front and then put a sling on the other but if you're holding it that does kind of get in the way a little bit it's no problem it's, it's no problem you've got recoil on the free away but if you're testing off a bag then you may want to remove this so it doesn't actually when recoil free recall this doesn't destroy your accuracy potential when you're shooting off of um, a bag um, doing your reloads and testing um, off the bench basically for accuracy just something to mention so i really really like it's this quite upright sculptured and textured pistol grip you've got a slight trigger <coughs> finger scallop here which really holds nicely uh, you've got a slight kick out here on the pistol grip which really does hold your hand very very nicely with a slight palm swell and here on the top it's slightly on the top of the bridge bit here it slightly protrudes which really does nestle your thumb in and it gives you a very nice hold and if you're transferring um, like we did in scotland through the forest and up and down the hills you can actually grip hold with your rifle very very nicely you've got your sticks in the other hand it's just a nice little feature as i say as i said very very strong but with the quest it's all about uh, ergonomics and adjustability as well because you have not only have a cheek piece adjuster and a butt pad adjuster as well, which is very, very good. And it's so simple to use. It's incredibly easy, literally. Central button here, push in, and your cheek piece elevates. You get up to about an inch adjustment here. So you get the correct height from your cheek weld here to your scope, which is very, very nice. It rises on twin pillars and then locks in very, very easily at any position you want on the central pillar. And the same is true on the, the base as well. You can get adjust the length of pull with a single push, locks in, back in. So you can actually lock to any length of pull uh, you like, which is very, very handy. And it's so much simpler than, you know, than using some rifles where you have to adjust using spaces, etc. And on the length of pull, you can adjust from, I think it's 13, uh, yeah, 13.75 inches to 15 inches, and then get a little bit extra on the, um, the trigger blade adjustment as well. But there you have it, that's the Seiko 90 Quest. It's, <clears throat> it's quite a pricey rifle, but it, in my view, worth every penny, penny. It's got Seiko's heritage, and you'll see when uh, in the next section when we take it out shooting, it's incredibly accurate. And um, just a nice, you know, uh, worthy rifle to have in the, uh, the Seiko range. 
Great, well here we are at 100 yards and we're going to first uh, test of the factory is the Hornaday International ECX and they're the 125 grain blunt nose. Shooting very, very well. They shot very nicely in the Seiko Peak. This is the Seiko Quest and we'll give it a, sh a shot at 100 yards. We'll do a three shot group. We'll just turn on the FX True Ballistic Chronograph, which is, a, I'd say, a fantastic bit of kit. Right, here we go. Two nine two one. Two nine two six, nice and consistent. Two nine eleven, and that is oh, all shots touching at hundred yards. I mean, you can't grumble at that, can you? Yeah, next we're going to try the Gecko, they're a bit uh, heavier, they're the, uh, the tip um, express point on this and they're 165 grain. So I'd be interested to see velocities of these at 100 yards. Well, the thing with the FX, it'll actually give you the velocities from zero all the way down to 100 yards or you can preset it. So it's a really good way of working out the true ballistic coefficient. Anyway, let's give these a go. Two four nine nine. Two four eight four. So it's very comfortable shoot off the bench. Oh my, they're almost touching as well. This is. Don't jinx it. Two five oh three. Oh, beautiful little triangular group. That's half inch group with Gecko one sixty five grain. These Seiko nineties. I mean. You can see it for yourself, they're shooting really well. And this Quest, I say it's really nice to actually have this adjustable cheek piece, especially length of pull, because I've got a long arms. Shooting off the bench, it makes it very comfortable indeed. Right, let's try the first lead free, and that's a Winchester Extreme Point, and they're lead free, and they're 150 grain. I say, it's really nice with these 90s. You've got the scalloped away top of the receiver, so you can just load straight from the top, which is great off the bench, and when you're out hunting as well. You know, it's as simple as that to load, so. Let's see what the velocities of these are like. Oh, much milder recoil on that. 2639. That's low right. 2638. Yeah, bigger group as we expect. It's lead free. And here we go. 2618. And that is. Oh, two touching one off. Again, you've seen the tests, you often with copper will get two on and one off. That's about inch and a quarter. Still, you know, respectable for lead free. Right. Another lead free round is Seiko's own uh, Powerhead Blade. That's 162 grain. They shot very well in the Seiko Peak we tested re uh, recently. So let's see how they do in the Quest. So that trigger is beautiful. I mean, this is on the first setting, that's the lightest setting. And that's uh, 2508. 252525. Oh, this is looking good. 2537, and that is 0.75 of an inch. We've led free at 100 yards with a Seiko blade. That's impressive. Right, a more traditional uh, lead cord bullet is the 150 grain Seiko game heads. And we'll be interested to see what they shoot like in comparison to the, uh, the lead free. I always like these loads, they're good, they're a nice good all rounder. So we'll have a, have a look at 100 yards and see how it's uh, going to shoot. Yeah, the upright design of this. Quest is very, very nice. it's quite intuitive. I say intuitive. It's just it just moulds very nicely. You've got this nice little hump here, which actually goes into the uh, uh, the well of your palm and your forefinger here, and it does really give a nice, it's, you know, a sort of a stable and quite a relaxed grip. No, it's very very nice. Right, here we go. Two seven eleven. Two 
2708. That's consistent. Ooh. 2742. Hmm, that wasn't so good. We had about, that's about an inch and a half group. So that was interesting. The Saker didn't actually like that ammo. So but there you are. That's a, yeah, that's a test. That's what it's shot. Like going a bit heavier, we've got the 168 grain Winchester uh, silver ballistic tips, and we'll see how they shoot. That's 2531. Two four eight zero. Two five three one. And that is yeah, about an inch group. That's quite nice, those heavyweight ones, these Winchesters are about the well they shoot really, to be honest with you. But I mean, you know, nice consistent from the Seiko Quest. Then finally the uh, the factory we're gonna test the Norma tip strike and their 170 grain conventional lead cord bullet. I'm uh, interested to see what the recoil's like on this, off the bench. Two five eleven. Two five three zero. Nice, two five two three, and that is in group, 100 yards, lovely. Well, I think we're gonna test some uh, reloads now, and I've got some 125 grain uh, Sierra Pro Hunters, they will sh shoot very well, and we've got 44 grains of VIT N133. Let's see how they shoot. Two seven eight zero. It's quite nice. That jumped out of the way. I didn't get the velocity on that, which is a shame. Oh, nice group. Two seven five nine. Oh, half inch group. Lovely. Very very nice. They all Sierra Pro Hunters. Uh, and 125 grain, they're quite an old fashioned round, but they always shoot well. And that Quest was shooting them really nice. And pleased with that, jolly good. And then if you like um, small species deer or um, eat foxes, but these are a bit heavy, these are uh, 110 grain uh, GMXs. And we use these for small, small species deer, as we say, because uh, in a freer weight, the lighter weight bullet tend to expand more because uh, a lot of our game or deer in this country are quite, you know, thin skinned, you know. So I tend to use these, uh, as you say, for like roe or Chinese wart deer or, or mint jack. Anyway, here we've got uh, 43 grains uh, of reloaded 10X and we'll uh, see how they shoot. Be nice as a comparison against those pro hunters. This is lead free, obviously, which we're gonna have to use in the future, unfortunately. Right, here we go. Two nine two four. That, I mean, that trigger as well is so crisp. It's lovely. Two nine five six. Talk about crisp. It's like minus one today, so that may reflect a little bit on the velocities, but that's stepping out a bit. It's quite nice. Oh dear. And that is 2951. And yet again, two on, one off. That's about, about an inch and a half, actually. That's a bit disappointing, but there you go, you know. <laughs> right, finally, then we're gonna have a look at another lead free, I thought, because these Barnes 130 uh, TTSXs are very good. And again, we're using uh, Reloader 10X. I quite like that, because it's got quite a short barrel on this uh, 308 Seiko Quest. And so with the faster powder, they actually get more efficient um, in that length barrel and I say it's 42 and a half grains of reloaded 10x and we'll see how that shoots with the 130 grain Barnes TTSXs. T747 
2730, nice and consistent. Oh, that's better group. 2731, very consistent, and that is, that's just a nice solid inch group. So very good, very good performance of the Quest. Well, that concludes the testing on the uh, Seiko Model 90 Quest. And as you see, it shot fantastically well. We're getting sub half MOE groups with the Gecko and the ECX Horn of the Ammunition. Absolutely fantastic. Anyway, if you like the testing, uh, please like and subscribe and uh, see us in the future.